as a young child in his mother's arms. As an adolescent, Karl Wojtyla began to write poetry. One of his first poems was addressed to his mother, expressing a burden of grief that he had never shared even with his friends. Over this your white grave, the flowers of life in white, so many years without you. How many have passed out of sight? Over this your white grave, covered for years, there is a stir in the air, something uplifting, and like death beyond comprehension. Over this your white grave, O oh mother, can such loving cease? For all his filial adoration, a prayer, give her eternal peace. She'd been dead for ten years, he was a young man, but you feel in the poem all the burden of those years of longing for her, all the years of unrequited love for his mother. And the poem is quiet, but it builds to this question at the beginning of the last stanza, which is a really a, a heartbroken cry. Over this your white grave, O oh mother, can such loving cease? I mean, love is a, it's a burden. It's hurting him so badly, he, he almost wants it to stop, his love for her. It's this heartbroken question that he cries out. It's a moment of intimacy that, as a reader, I felt... Um, moved by to be witness to it. And what happened in the next line is a complete shutting down, a complete buttoning up of the emotion. It's hard to even say the words for all his filial adoration of prayer. You feel that something has immediately gotten exposed and then shut down, that it's not okay for that vulnerability to be hanging out there. And that question, which is probing and expresses confusion and ambivalence, uh, it's not okay that somehow it has to be chastened. When Carol was 12, his brother, a brilliant physician, died of scarlet fever. Nine years later, he lost his father. Carol came back from work and saw that his father had died. He was stricken and kept saying, I wasn't there when my mother died. And now I have not been there when my father died. Carol stayed up all night, praying by the bed where his father lay. He showed the same resolute calm, accepting these blows unquestioningly, saying, this is God's will. He was 21 and completely alone in the world. In the Pope's poems, he talks about how solitude is good because no one can take that away from you. It's a refuge, it's the one last retreat. And if in that solitude you find God, then there's an incredible fulfillment there because if you're in love with God in this place that is remote and inaccessible, you're really safe. Much later, as Pope, his love for these mountains, his passion for Poland, would compel him to return. He said that he had to come back to find himself. Only here could he touch the truth. It was in June of 1979 that the Pope made his first trip to Poland after being elected Pope. He evokes such a response, especially from the young people. I remember that night in Poland. The children kept joking with him, and he would joke back with them. But the most touching moment of that day was when they started singing an old Polish folk song about the mountaineer who loved his mountain so much, but now he's gone and he can't come back. I don't know if there really were tears in the Pope's eyes, but I was sure there were because I, there were almost tears in my eyes at that moment to see this man who was so Polish, so deeply rooted in his homeland, and who had had to give it all up 
for the rest of his life to come and serve the church in Rome. St. Peter, who grew up among Jews, for whom the Jews are not a theological abstraction or a remote and alien people, but his friends, childhood friends. And he lived in a house with a Jewish landlord, and he played soccer with Jewish kids. Jews were for him his playmates. When the Holocaust murdered those boys, they weren't statistics, they weren't people that he knew at a distance, they were his friends. They were people who were part of his life. And I have had the profound sense in all his dealings with me that there is this incredible gulf there. There is this void there of, of the people who were killed whom he knew. So that when he talks about the Holocaust, it, it is real. It is palpable. For him, the Shoah is not history. He was there. He was present at the scene of the crime. And this has marked him for life. He could not fail to ask, how could this have happened in Europe after 2,000 years of Christianity? And he had the moral courage to look into his own faith the history of his own religion and see there some of the elements that made this possible. The trouble between Christians and Jews goes back nearly 2,000 years. Poland's charged and complex place in that history makes the Pope's journey all the more remarkable. Karol Wojtyła was an altar boy in Warowice when Cardinal Hahn, the head of the Polish church, had his pastoral letter on the Jews read throughout the country. It is a fact that the Jews deceive, they the interest, and are pimps. It is a fact that the religious and ethical influence of the Jewish young people on Polish people is a negative one. There will be a Jewish problem as long as the Jews are fighting against the Catholic Church, persisting in free thinking, and are the vanguard of godlessness, Bolshevism, and subversion. The world that young Wojtyla grew up in, I remember very vividly because I was a little child within it. Lubachev, the city in which I was born, is not far different from the town some kilometers over in which he was born. My last and most vivid memories of Poland are running repeatedly down through the town square towards the house in which we lived with these little Polish kids chasing me, wanting to beat me up because I was a Christ killer, calling me Pauszewizid dirty Jew. In 1938, Karol Wojtyla moved to Krakow to study Polish literature at the university. He came to love this ancient city of crooked streets, of light and shadow. A year later, the Nazis marched into Poland. after the Germans entered Poland, the first victims of the German terror were the Polish intelligentsia. The first mass executions were not those of the Jewish population. Wojtyla would have seen the killings, the segregation of the Jewish population from the, the rest of the populations. Israel's guest. We knew about ghetto. Any person was aware of that. This was everyday life. 
he saw around him the Jews being destroyed. Poland was the racial laboratory of the Nazis. This is where they started to put their abhorrent theories into practice. The enormity of it. The war was a kind of crime against human dignity. It wasn't the question of how many people got killed. It was how it was being done to them, what was being done to their minds, to them as people. And I think that's a very strong element in the Polish experience of war. And I think that's one that reverberates through the Pope's um, teachings very strongly. I think he has an incredibly strong sense of the dignity of, of human beings and how fragile this can be in times of war, any war. When the Nazis invaded, they closed the university in Krakow and other institutions in an attempt to destroy Polish culture. Professors were arrested and shot. Karl Wojtyla helped organize a subversive underground theater. He was a leading actor in plays that celebrated Poland's history and language, a form of opposition for which he too could have been executed. Was it dangerous? Yes, of course it was dangerous, because at that time we were meeting, it was clandestinely, undercover in different places. We were not fighting using guns and ammunition. We were fighting using our own words. We know that the Pope, as a young man during the war, worked in a quarry. It was harsh work. It was back-breaking work. He saw how the men around him suffered. It was a difficult place to keep going and, and to labor. I thought those poems of that time would somehow be wrestling with um, the events of that moment in history and in his life. And at first I, I thought, but they're not. Um, none of that drama was documented in the poems at all. The poems were celebrating an interior life of being in communion with God. I thank you for giving the soul a place far removed from the din and clamor, where your friend is a strange poverty. You, immeasurable, take but a little cell. You love places uninhabited and empty. The world around him is one of absolute loss, absolute unpredictability, and evil, and uncertainty. So God is a refuge, and the poems seem like um, a fleeing to God. These lines were written a few miles from Auschwitz during the darkest moment of human history. He must have been struggling every day with how do I respond to what is happening around me. Karl Wojtyla's vocation to the priesthood took shape during this dark time. As Pope, he would reflect on this crucial period in his memoir. In the face of the spread of evil and the atrocities of the war, the meaning of the priesthood became much clearer to me. It was like an interior illumination. One day I saw this with great clarity. The Lord wants me to become a priest.